Hello everybody, this is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today's Monday, it's August 19th, 2024. It's 12 25 p.m. Central Time here in the Ozarks, and this is Mystery Report number three for 2024. We got this together. It's, it's two emails from Gary. Gary has asked more questions and received more answers about the mystery explained than everybody else in the world combined officially now so he's been coming over many saturdays he's my work buddy and uh he just called me he'll just call me up and ask me questions and uh he made it through his identity understanding what it is to be son of god going back to the infinite realm and these are questions that were asked october oh, august 5th 2023 and there's a bonus as he wrote me another one there's a bonus down at the bottom is the second I added diagrams to this and I was going to it's becoming more apparent to me that very very few people understand what the heck I'm talking about on the mystery explained seeing God's wisdom hidden in plain sight and I was going to stop the normal uh, instruction and maybe I'll do that for the next report and go to a basic the mystery explained report the thing to realize is that this program started in 2019 and newsletter number one 2019 when you subscribe to this program then you get all the newsletters from the beginning and there's a breadcrumb trail so things start off really simple. Two Gospels in the New Testament, two churches in the New Testament, the uh, four baptisms, the difference between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus, in order, just the way that they're laid out here on the website. So there's a there's a plan, there's a program. The Mystery Explained is a, this is how, number one, newsletter number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. And there's a breadcrumb trail. And so things that are very simple at the beginning, they become more complicated as you're going through. So um, when I realize there's not very many people on the path, then I'm tempted to stop the program that I told you guys from the beginning, this is the way it's going to be, and then to, you know, have a ABCs of the mystery explained to help people to catch up more and more. And then, like today, I, I go back and revisit these emails and answering Gary's questions, which he's already received the email answer from me. But then I realize that I'm deviating from the from the program. And so I, I'm pulling up some, this is what the Mystery Explained looks like, the EPUB version. So whenever you order your NanoSilver, whenever you subscribe, then you get this for free, the EPUB version with the chapters. And you can just start off at the beginning and off you go and you're to read it three times and you're going to read the the new testament pauline epistles three times in a bible workbook so everything's laid out everything's everything's laid out start off at the beginning and god's word is a spirit witness let, let me just stop here for a second before you answer gary's questions and give you a brief overview but i have to admit i wasn't going to mention but i'm a little bit disappointed because my intention was to work on this this year the black star is almost here so my intention was to work on this this year with more fervor than previous years and so i did three three interviews dr jason dean and josh monday and then uh, Cliff Stephen, three Mystery Explained interviews, deliberately and on purpose, scheduled. And I was hoping to do more, but there really hasn't been no response. There hasn't been any response. And so it feels like that I'm wasting your time or wasting my time. And so, you know, I was praying about that, about this this morning. And you know, kind of deciding, trying to decide what to do. Is this going to be a distraction to distract you away from preparing for the Black Star that's almost here? So 
let me just I'm kind of going back and forth let me this is the first diagram they're all in a the folder they're in order this is the first one that I just showed you in the mystery explained I want to go through them a little bit to help maybe ring a bell help to wake somebody up if you cannot prepare physically you cannot join the survival group program you can't work physically you can't prepare physically for what's coming you can prepare spiritually that's what this program is all about this uh the book was written in 2000 i'm, I'm, I'm giving you a brief history the the data gathered to put this book together was gathered over a period of decades from the time i was a teenager now i'm sitting I'm, 66 years old and the book was actually written in the summer of 2005 all in one summer it was every day from the time i woke up to the time i went to bed through the summer 2005 and that was just about the time i was starting getting ready to start i didn't know but the, when i finished that this then the lord god sent me to the 9 11 investigation 2006 Okay, so this did not get published until 2017. There's a lot of other things were happening. And for three of those years, I was extremely angry with God because God's showing me all these things. And then he blinds people from seeing it, the mystery of inequity. So I could explain it to people, draw, draw a diagram, show them the color-coded diagram. They just could not see it. And then I realized, up. Uh, this is God's hidden wisdom. This is his, his stuff. And he only allows some certain people to see it. And so I was striking out badly. So I could see it clear as day. Everybody else can't see it. And I'm trying to explain it to them. And they're looking at me like I have three heads or something. And that's why 2005 until 2017, the book was never published. Finally published 2017. And um, the reason that it was published is because one particular person wrote to me and told me that they took my book because I because I was giving it away for free. There was a PDF. I was just giving it away to people. And he took he downloaded all the pages. He, he and he printed them out and he put them in a binder for himself. And whenever he did that, it struck my heart. I go, you know, somebody sees it out there, so maybe Lord God's gonna let somebody else see it. And so then that's when the time was exerted to finally get the book published so this is at the very beginning the very first diagram three witnesses these three witnesses are spirit blood and water throughout the whole bible yeah spirit witnesses like the father son and the holy spirit heaven seven and earth man seed woman spirit soul body there are charts of them in the in my book mr explain okay so the summing up process Whenever this begins, it's a little sliver, the blood witness in the middle. You have a spirit witness over here and a water witness over here. They're separate. The earth was formless and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. Then when they touch together again, they become a sliver, like a girdle. The, the Hebrew and the Greek use the term like John the Baptist and his girded, girdle. Spirit witness, water witness, prophet, priest, and king. So... By the summing up process shows the blood witness getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the Son keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger until it becomes the Word again. In the beginning was the Word. That's a round singularity expression. But then the Holy Spirit's taken out. And the Father, the power from on high, Luke 135, the power from on high overlaps it, overshadows, and then the Son's begotten, and then the Son enlarges. The power to judge is get take is given from the Father, all the glory and everything, to the Son because the Father's not going to exist anymore. The Son's going to become the Word again. So the Word and the Son are synonymous. Synonymous of yeah, them. So, yeah, so, same thing. <laughs> Until the three are into the one again. God is all in all. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 27 is the Son being completed. And then he goes into the side of God and he's... The God's all in all. The word comes from where he emerged from, from the side of God. Okay, so the Holy Bible is the spirit witness. That's God's work. The mystery explained, people don't know, they don't realize what it is. It's, a, it's written in blue for a reason. It's a water witness helper. It's what it is. 
this red folder in the middle is what expands. It's all your three witness mystery sets. That's how I started my own red folder and drew these diagrams, actually draw them out. If you want to see it, your inner man is the one that's going to help you to see it. I can instruct your inner man. Your inner man instructs you. That's the way this works. So that's why the sons of disobedience are never going to see this because their inner man is broken. You have to be a member of Christ's body. You have to actually obey the gospel. You have Christ in you. God inside of him, reconciling the world to himself through your work. That's what's going on right here. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, spirit, blood, water. Heaven of Genesis 1, 1. And there's a heaven of Genesis 1, 8. There's a heaven and a highest heaven. First Kings, what is it, 18, 26? There's a heaven right here, Genesis 1, 8. There's a heaven right here, too. Genesis 1, 1. Do you know the difference? There's a ginormous difference. This heaven here is part of this creation between the heavens and the earth. This heaven here is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Christ Jesus. It was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. See the circle? All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. John 1, 1 through 3. That's a tabernacle laid out of Genesis 1, 1. So this is the man of God right here. Here's the three witnesses of the Almighty right here, Revelation 1, 8. It's written in plain English. God who is, God who was, and God who is to come, the Almighty. Those are the three witnesses like the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Matthew chapter 19. Most people think that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are the three witnesses of God, but they're not. They're the three witnesses of the Word. They're taking the Son of God and making him into an idol. Most professing Christians are idolaters. They don't realize that God who is, God who was, and God who was to come are the three witnesses of the Word. They're praying to my Father who art in heaven. Uh, pfft, my Father who art in heaven is a spirit witness of the Word. People don't know the difference. When I try to tell them the difference, they call me a heretic. These are the three witnesses of the temple. There are veils, just like you have veils separating your spirit and your soul, and your soul and your body. It's laid out in the exact image of a man. The temple is the tabernacle of Moses. The positioning of these, these the furnishings, they all mean something, down to the 12 pans of the tabernacle, 12 golden pans. This is, I'm the preacher, right? I'm preaching you the gospel. Jesus Christ is Lord. He's the Son of God. God raised him from the dead on the third day. Your redemption is in Christ. Your forgiveness is through his shed blood. That's the gospel. You obey the gospel, and then the the Holy Spirit of God's Word that's in me and the Holy Spirit of promise that's in me and the faith of Jesus that is in me goes to you. Faith to faith. Romans 1, 16 and 17. It's a faith to faith transaction. But God has to choose you through the gospel. 2 Thessalonians 2, 13. He chooses you through the gospel. You obey the gospel. You reject the gospel, you get something else. Mystery of iniquity. The mystery of iniquity is the antithesis of the mystery of Christ. Every time Paul teaches a truth pertaining to the mystery of Christ, he's also teaching the antithesis of the mystery of iniquity. So I'm baptized into Christ. I'm seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2, start 4. Well, the members of the body of the Antichrist are seated in the Antichrist in Antichrist Jesus. The same way. So they are boiling in the lake of fire right now and don't know it. Millions and millions of people are waltzing around thinking they're Christians and they're boiling in the lake of fire. There's going to be a rapture of the righteous and a rapture of the unrighteous. And when that happens, all those that have been blinded, deceived, deluded by the looting influence, forced to believe what's false all the days of their deluded life, they're going to wake up in the lake of fire wondering, what's going on here?
So there are 80 color-coded diagrams in the Mystery Explained. So I've just shown you a few of them. There's a whole bunch of them. So this is the red folder, just a sample of a mystery folder of what's going on inside your mystery folder. Here's the beginning and the end. Everything that comes out of God goes back into God. Three witnesses. This is in the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth right here. That's in between God all in all and God all in all. So it starts off with a sliver. So you get this in the mystery explained. You see how the diagrams get, they're very simple at the beginning. They become more complicated till you go. That's what's on the back of the, of the book right there. The witnesses all together inside of God's infinite realm. That's where we come from. So just to give you an idea, this is the tabernacle. This is the Mount of Transfiguration. Peter, John, and James, Moses, Christ, and Elijah. The first and the last. You're looking at them right there. The Lord God in the garden with Adam and Eve. The two witnesses of Revelation 11 are Adam and Eve. People think they're Elijah and Moses, and they're right. Because Elijah is Adam and Moses is Eve. Noah is Eve. Sarah is Eve. Bathsheba is Eve. They're the two olive trees that come again and again and again. Everybody else is born or die once, Hebrews 9.27. Everybody else, it's only the begotten's that come again and again and again. There's only three of them in the Bible. Jesus Christ, the only begotten of the Father. The only begotten. And then the two that he made. Adam has no belly button. He was made. Eve has no belly button either. She was made too from him. Those are the three begotten's and they're standing right here on the Man of Transfiguration. Then you go back and you realize, uh, Moses and Joshua is Adam and Eve. One had to see death. One went through the promised land. Only two from the original sons of Israel crossed the Jordan River. Joshua and Caleb. That's it. Caleb, his name means dog. Like the Gentiles, that's a type of what's going to happen coming in the future. So all these things are laid out. We're going to judge the world and the angels. There's a reason why. 1 Corinthians 6, 2 and 3. Everything makes sense whenever you go through the mystery explained, as long as God has chosen you to see it. So that's a little you know, overview. Whenever we're on the other side of the veil, that veil is approaching rapidly. Is time passing more rapidly for you? It is for me. We're, there's a compression that's happening. We're coming up to a veil. Everything changes on the other side. And the closer we get to it, the more compressed it, everything is. When we pop through the other side, everything changes in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And then you're going to look back and you're going to look at the mystery explained. You're going to go, oh, that's where all this stuff came from. It's really important stuff. Where we're about to go, all this is extremely important. People just can't see it now. Those of you that can see it, you're an extreme small minority. And the people you try to share it with in your environment think that you're crazy as John the Baptist, who they say had a demon. Okay, so before we go any further, Amazon. So I know when people are catching on because I start getting royalty checks from my publisher and I'm not getting any royalty checks from my publisher. Let's put it that way. Whenever I did the interviews, there was like one or two that came through. There's a couple people that are out there. So in theory, this is, this is really, really great stuff. If you can see it, but in theory, one person's sees it and shares it with another person who sees it. That's two people, four people, six people, you know, eight people, 16 people. In a month, if that happens every day, that's 10 million people. I'm telling you, that ain't happening. It's just not happening. I was supposed to write The Mystery Explained 2. Never going to happen because people don't get into Mystery Explained 1. They just don't get it. And... I'll probably forget after we go through Gary's question. 
any of my Substack articles. Substack article, go down to the bottom. There's a place to subscribe right there. It's only $25 a year. And you get free copies of my book. You get your nano silver, you get the PDF extended version of that too. And you can start doing this. Go through the six introductory videos at the website. Start the mystery explained. Start reading Romans 1, 1. Get yourself a Bible with columns in it so you can write in the columns. If you don't already have one. And a three ink pens, different colors, and a ruler and begin the process. It's a workbook, Mr. Explain, and everything's laid out for you. You just have to follow the instructions. You'll start hearing the angel song. It'll start coming out of your heart. All the witnesses of the Bible start testifying simultaneously, and then you're going to realize, holy cow! Be like a kid with a new toy. Okay. So that was an overview of the Mystery Explained. And now this is Gary's question. Also, if you were a, a, a Mystery Report subscriber before, then there were, what, 17 of these or 22 of these or something like that. And John, who's been a great help from for years and years and years, he went through and downloaded all of these. These were uh, presentations that I made every, was it Saturday or Sunday morning? at Awakened Radio, and he, now he has it up to 35 lessons. So whenever you get your hands on this newsletter, now, and the only newsletters that are going to be given away now are one through five from 2019. The rest of them, then you must subscribe, $25 a year to get. And then you get access from the Dropbox folder, all of the Mystery Report newsletters, just like this one. So this one is uh, in a series. So this one is a little more complicated than the last one, a little more complicated than the one before that, a little more before that. The reason is because Gary is getting it and he sees it and he's asking me more questions. You're probably going to have similar questions by the time that you've been into the Mystery Explained four, five, six, seven years. And you're going to be wondering about your identity and you're about I've been God's incarnated inside of other gods and God's infinite realm and how we all know each other. You know me and I know you intimately already. Like we've been married forever. Take a look around and realize you know everyone. You're incarnate inside of everyone. You're a God in God's infinite realm. That's why I, that, that's what David says. Psalms 82, 6. Christ quotes David in John chapter 10, start at 34. You are God's sons of the living God. Because we're all from God's infinite realm. All of us that are seventh-day people, six-day people are members of Adam's body from the day that he was made. Those are like the the Eastern races, that, the Aborigine peoples, American Indians, RH positive, exclusive, beardless generally, unless they've mixed with seventh-day people. So there's different kinds of people here. That doesn't even include the amphibious and reptilian races that are flying around the spaceships, supposed ETs, extraterrestrials. No, they're Ts. They're terrestrial. They've been here for millions and millions of years. So the truth is much stranger than fiction. And we're going to be able to see the whole truth on the other side of the veil. That's approaching. Then you guys will be able to look back and say, oh, yeah, that's what that guy was saying all along. Okay, so this didn't have a title to it. So this is after working on it today and adding diagrams and things. And this is the theme of what Gary's asking me about. It pertains specifically to Nephilim and sons of God that's on, that are on the dark side, particularly. But in order to understand the dark side, then the good idea is to understand the, 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 the children of the light, the children of the day. And then you can compare to, and then it makes makes more sense. Because what Paul is writing to us in those 13 epistles, generally, it's about the sons of the day, of the light. It's about grace doctrine, church doctrine for our mystery body of Christ. That pertains to us only. Doesn't apply to Peter, John, and James, the kingdom church. Doesn't apply to Israel, the flesh. Those are the three primary dispensations, households of the Bible. And we are the mystery body of Christ. We're the body that the 
Old Testament prophets never saw. The, the truth about us was only revealed after Christ was raised from the dead. That's what Paul's all about. For those who don't know, Paul is not one of the 12 apostles. Luke is not one of the 12 apostles. They say, but there's a gospel Luke. Yeah, <laughs> Luke was not one of the 12 apostles. He was Paul's physician. He was likely the smartest of everybody that ever wrote in the Bible, a doctor. And Peter, John, and James, they were fishermen. They spoke a, a, a fisherman dialect of the Aramaic. And so whenever they wrote things down, they wrote it in the fisherman's dialect of Aramaic. Well, it had to be translated into Greek because that was the language of commerce like English in the world today. And so how that happened? Well, Peter, John, and James, they wrote their things down. They wrote all their accounts down. Matthew, they wrote them down, and then they brought them to Luke. And they brought them him brand new parchment and exchange for, for translating their accounts. Then they gave, they gave Luke their, their parchment. He got to keep them. And he gave them back the new parchment of which he translated. That's how it's, that's how it worked. That's how Luke ended up with all the parchments, and it was able to make the Gospel of Luke that has way more information than any other gospel accounts, even though he wasn't there. He got it from everybody else. So Luke is a likely uh, writer of Hebrews. He wrote it. We know that he wrote it. I know that he wrote it because I did the research. There are terms that are only used in Hebrew and in Letters that Luke authored, doctor terms of the Greek that are used. That's the tell that told us who did it. So even in Paul's letters, then Paul's losing his eyesight near the end, and Luke was the guy that did the writing. So when Luke wrote, then he wrote in his doctor's terms. He used adjectives and things that Paul nor any of the, the Aramaic uh, storytellers would ever use. So Luke wrote most of the New Testament actually wrote it, he didn't, he, although he wasn't there. He knew more than anybody else because he had all the accounts of everybody. Just a little background on the um, what goes into the Mystery Explained, a decades and decades of research. Okay, so I'm going to go through at 28 minutes. And so going to go through this first one. The second one's going to be a bonus. I usually just give you one. There's a second one that's a bonus that's like a follow-up to this. I've answered the questions, but this first one has, the uh, the second one only has one diagram, this first one. So I think you're going to be able to catch the drift. For those of you, that, especially if you've gone from 2019, newsletter number one, two, three, four, five, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2000. If you've, if you've gone through that, then this is going to make really good sense for you. If you haven't, then start at the beginning and make your way through. So this is Gary. He says, uh, I have always read and been told the Nephilim were the offspring of the sons of God, that the sons of God saw the daughters of mankind. They were beautiful and they took wives for themselves. That's in Genesis 6. Which, and then Gary continues, which I thought were bad angels on the side of Satan or incarnated dragon of the word realm. So the word realm is heaven. Whenever we're around each other for a while, then the word realm, that's a phrase that I had to come up with to distinguish between the heavens. Because there's heavens where the angels dwell. There's heaven of Genesis 1.8. That's between heaven and earth. That's where the throne is and that's where the Lamb of God, who's a Lord God of the Old Testament, the Lamb of God, that's where he's standing in the center of the throne right now. And so semantics kept getting in the way. So the word realm is heaven of Genesis 1.1. It's an almost infinite realm. It's frozen almost motionless from our perspective. It's moving so slow. It's like looking at Virgo and Libra in the night, night sky. It's for, they're moving, but they're almost motionless. So, And then my answer is, keep in mind the phrase, and this is important for you guys, on earth as it is in heaven, as it is in God's infinite realm. 
So Jesus Christ, in teaching the disciples how to pray, gave them two of the three witnesses on earth as it is in heaven. Two of the three witnesses, the water witness and the blood witness. He didn't give them the spirit witness. But the, what, what we, as mature members of Christ's body, what we can understand is the complete phrase, on earth, that's the way things are happening right now. There's nothing new happening under the sun. It's happening on earth as it is in heaven, as it is in God's infinite realm. So this is in the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. Singularity. These are broken into their three witnesses. So things are happening here in this earth as they are in heaven, as they are in God's infinite realm. The earth is divided into heavens, heaven, and earth. The domain of angels, the domain of men, and the domain of singularity, expressions, living souls. So Adam in Genesis 2, 7, living soul. He didn't have an angel part, didn't have a man part. They were all the same thing. When Adam was cast down the earth, things changed. And where that happened is Genesis 3.21. When he's given skins, everything before that happens in heaven. That's why there's no procreation until after that happens. So the earth, by powers, world forces of this darkness, that's the darkness. This is Genesis 6, 12. It's the, Genesis, it's the darkness that fell in Genesis 1, 2. Darkness upon the face of the deep. The evil forces of this darkness. Same darkness. That's the primary feature and characteristic of this evil age. From Genesis 1, 4. The evil age. That started back in Genesis 1, 2. We're still living in the same age right now as Genesis 1, 2. That is not going to change until Revelation 21, 1. So the, that's why the devil is a god of this world. The primary characteristic is darkness. The darkness, we're walking through the shadow, valley of the shadow of death and the shroud of darkness right now. But that's why seeing God's wisdom hidden in plain sight, that's why it's so valuable, extremely, extremely valuable. If you can see the three witnesses and the patterns and hear the testimony, you are one in a million people. And we get to where we're going, you're going to see that those of us that can see these things and hear these things and share these things with others, we are going to be the ones that are adorned in the bright white garments and ephods, chest plates that have beautiful stones that are, the edges are cut sharp as razor blades the light glistens on them. We have staffs of power and stones on them and crowns with jewels in the stones and Lights are like shining all around us. It's just reflecting of the light that is in our environment that's coming from within us. And then on the other end of the spectrum, there are those among us that are going to be, they're going to be walking around in like a dirty, dingy garment, has clouds of darkness on it. They have a ring, one little ring, a silver ring on their finger, on their little pinky. And there's a spectrum of us in between that. So I'm, trying to help you guys to see these things and especially i mean seeing them is one thing and learning and learning and being have your nose in the bible the greatest consecrator on the planet is your nose in the bible it's separating you from the world but then whenever you can see these things and then you're helping someone else to see them that's when god gets really excited your new inner man will be jumping up and down and you're you're getting reward upon reward upon reward and you're ascending higher and it's a pyramid, you know, like Amway. It's a pyramid. It's uh, truly, it is. Sounds crazy. Christ is at the top of that pyramid. There are diagrams in the book. White, glistening, bright. And the objective is to be as close to him as possible up the pyramid. There's fewer stones at the top and there's many at the bottom. The world right now is filled with common rough cut stones. And I'm doing my best to help you to be straight edged and sharp. Seeing the difference between kingdom doctrine, water, grace doctrine, blood is the key. 
for us in this period. That's my two Gospels in the New Testament, seeing them, separating them, seeing those different doctrinal precepts. That's how it begins. And Gary's come back to me so many times and reiterated time and time again how important it is, the two Gospels of the New Testament. Because he's helping other people, and then it goes back to that all the time. And then the two churches, oh yeah, church doctrine, the four baptisms, those the basics and those that foundation, extremely important. So even if you're not a subscriber, you're never going to be, go watch those four, those six videos in the scripture section. You're going to get yourself a head start on a lot of people. Okay, so let me get back to where, to where we are here. The, um, the forces of wickedness in the heavenly places, Ephesians 6.12. The sons of God, while the sons of God, creation, all things earth, awaiting our appearance. That's from... That's from Romans 8. If you ever get down a little bit, Romans 8, that's a place to go. There shall therefore be no more condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Boom, 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 until creation is anticipating the, the, our birth. We're going to merge into the creation as stars, as light. It's great stuff. Shall inhabit the heavenly seats during the upcoming day of the Lord for all the ages to come. Those heavenly seats are currently occupied by the sons of the devil, darkness and disobedience. That's why everything's going to hell in a handbasket all around us. We're reenacting the satanic rebellion. Satan's people are in charge. Satan in God's infinite realm. The dragon in the highest heaven. The word realm. The devil here. So that's what Gary is coming to terms with. Remember, he started off with the Nephilim and the, and the sons of God. So those sons of darkness, like the sons of light, could pass through the veil, dividing earth and heaven to incarnate onto the earth until the Lord God sealed the passage when the black star came during the days of Noah. So here's the deal. The colors of the rainbow before Noah, there were six of them. They did not include the green neutral color in the middle. So that, And it makes a reference back in, in, in Noah. With the sign in the light, the sign was that seventh. It's the the neutral color. The plants don't use green. They use every other color. They don't use green. That's why they look green to us. They reflect the green light. That's the neutral color in the center of the spectrum. That's the change. So the spirit witnesses, the blood witnesses on the other side could come here through the light. God stopped that. And... The sign is in the rainbow of what he did. But you'd have to be around before to know that that's, you just, you hold me to that. Hold me to that. When we get on the other side, everything that, even the secrets of men are all brought to light. Everything. Everything you've ever said, everything you ever thought. Same is true for all of us. And so I'm saying it right now. That's what it is. So they could come back and forth through the light. And then they could incarnate and they could go and then they were like giants and they could take women. And that's where um, Goliath and his brothers came from. There's some of those still trotting around on the earth right now. Six fingered people. So um, that's what they could do. And then God changed things with Noah and people started living. Whenever the black star comes, it divides times from time. Time, the time before to the time after the black star. So people lived to be thousands of years old back before Noah. Then they lived to be 120. That was a normal lifetime. Then, days of Moses, here come the black star again. God sends one of his witnesses again, or sometimes both of them. And then people lived to only be 70 years old. Well, when the black star comes this time and it's almost here, people are going to live to be thousands of years old again. Things are going to change. The old, all the things of the written in the prophets are going to be fulfilled and then that's going to take about 3600 years the black star is going to come at the end of the age and then matthew 24 is going to be fulfilled there's so many people shaking my head here they think that we're at the end of the age now we're nowhere near the end of the age thousands of years from the end of the age the day of the lord is about to begin and the thing that escapes the notice is the same thing peter says don't let this fact escape your notice that a day to the lord the day of the lord is as a thousand years he doesn't say it's a thousand years, it's as a thousand years. It's a long time. And that time is the time 
that it takes the black star to make one orbit cycle that's 3,600 years. That's how long it's going to take for the restoration of to begin of all things. Last two verses of the Old Testament. Behold, I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet before the great and terrible day of the Lord. He will restore the hearts of the fathers to children, the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the land with a curse. And then Christ says, Matthew 17, Elijah must come and restore all things. He must come and restore all things. Acts 3, start at 19. Heaven must hold Christ by the hand until the restoration of all things. And I'm sending a prophet down to verse 26. He did not heed his word will be utterly destroyed from among the people. That's where John, we're almost there. It's about to happen. The people will begin this period. The black star is going to leave. People are going to begin this period. They're going to live all the way to the end of the age. Over 3,000 years old. They're going to look like some. Some are going to look like they're 25 years old. Some are going to look like they're 35 years old. And they're going to live thousands of years old. Somebody that dies at 100 years is going to be said to be a baby. In the period that's coming. And they think there's 8 billion people. They think the world's full. The world can hold 100 billion people. And it's going to by the end of the age. Okay, so where was I? Sons of darkness, sons of light, passed through the veil back and forth. So this is how the Holy Spirit incarnated onto the earth is Melchizedek. Melchizedek was incarnate on the earth. That's the Holy Spirit incarnate. He was incarnate on the earth for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. He was the priest for Gentiles thousands and thousands of years before any such thing as a Jew ever walked the planet. He was the intercessor that walked around as a man, the Holy Spirit incarnate. He's typical of God's word incarnating in Adam in God's infinite realm to provide intercession for the sons of God also incarnate in him along with those represented by the six-day people today. So if you've gone through my answers previous to this, all this makes sense. If you've seen it for the first time, then it's gobbledygook, likely. Okay. In a session for the sons of God incarnate in him with those represented by the six-day people, when God created Adam in the first place. So in God's infinite realm, on the day that God made Adam, he made members of his body. Adam was infinite. The members of his body were infinite. So for all the Chinese and all the Aborigines and all the American, all of those that are alive today and that ever lived were all members of Adam's body on the day that God made him. But then there were other gods like Adam. They incarnated inside of Adam. Those are seventh day people that are here. There are different kinds of people, different dispensations of people that are here. There are lots of different dispensations. So in, as soon as somebody says that man, mankind, and they try to group everybody into one group, then it's a it's a red flag for me. They don't really begin to comprehend the complexity of God's various dispensations and administrations. Therefore, if you're following in regard to your career, you are gods and all of you are sons of the Most High. God created all his sons in the God's infinite realm, whether they are incarnate here as sons of righteousness or sons of unrighteousness. Some hosts are, designate, are destined for glory and light, while some are aligned with Satan, the dragon, and the devil. They are destined for the lake of fire. That's where they're going to be summed up eventually. Even those in the outer darkness end up in the lake of fire. The children of light will put on immortality. The children of darkness will put on immortality only to wish they could die. When they wake up and realize they, are, they will be in torment, suffering in God's wrath and condemnation for the ages to the ages of the ages. That's the Greek term. And aorist tense for, that's the tense of perpetuity. However, based on our latest email, sons of God, the name is also used to call out the infinite realm, sons of God, that has the ability to incarnate inside of one another. Yes, Satan and his minions incarnate in the sons of God, in the sons of God in God's infinite realm, like everybody else. 
See, the thing that distinguishes, let me stop right here. The things that distinguishes the sons of righteousness from the sons of unrighteousness is the difference between Cain and Abel. In fact, go back to God's infinite realm. So Abel was the one that was killed by his brother. We're all brothers in God's infinite realm, but some of us were deceived by, the, by Satan in God's infinite realm. Those are the ones that are incarnate here as women. I know, throw the rocks. It's true. It's taught through all the types. Then, the men, the, the ones that are incarnate as, as men, laughed at the, at the Satan. They weren't deceived by him, but they were deceived by the ones incarnate here as women. So now, we incarnate, and the, the people that we incarnate around, our wives, our children, our daughters, our sons, our cousins, those that are around us, are the ones that are the nearest to us in God's infinite realm. Some of them are victims right along with us, like Abel. Some of them are here as Cain's. So we're going to judge the world and the angels. When all this, all the smoke clears of what we're doing now, we're going to occupy the heavenly seats. And we're going to judge the world and the angels, just like Paul says. We have to make sure that the Cain's make it into the lake of fire. That's our job. And that the Abels make it to the side of righteousness. So the sons consenting to and being deluded and deceived are part of the process leading to the fall. You can clearly see the devil is in the world and even the God of this world, right? So this is one of the diagrams. See, this is the God, heaven and earth. And there's an antithesis to it, the lake of fire. We're baptized into the sun. See in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is the word room right here. They are baptized into the lake of fire. That's baptism to the Antichrist. And on the other side of that is the outer darkness. This is the second veil. See it? That's the second veil. So to boil everything down, Satan in the infinite realm, God held him down and cut off his infinite head from his infinite body. And he stuck his body up against the second veil. So that's the that's where iniquity is. The iniquity that was found in him. The fall. Okay, so some go right into this lake of fire. Some are in there right now. So a lot of people read John 3, 16. They don't read 17. Because many have been judged already. When you're judged already, this is where you go. So the Hillary's and the Billary's and the House of Rothschild's their lot, those that are trying to kill us, or the, the Bill Gates and all those, they're in the lake of fire right now. They just don't know it yet. We're going to visit them there for the ages to come. And as the ages go by, nearing the end of every age, the sons of God become very complacent. Their feet start dragging. When they come back from the day of visitation, visiting Bill Gates and all Hillary and all the monsters in the lake of fire, whenever they come back, they are like the spring calf out of the stall. His first day, clicking his heels. He can't, he's running to the herd, man. He's so happy, he can't believe he's been watching them from a distance. So we, we go from being complacent and things are all dull to like kids on Christmas morning, starting off fresh near the end of the age it happens. God knows he comes to us. He, okay, son, you're having a lot of trouble, aren't you? The time for your day of visitation. That's what we do. We go to the Lake of Fire has no power over us. We go there. We spend all day there. No problem whatsoever. Those that are the sons of God, the disobedience are in the Lake of Fire is torment to them. And the goings on there are. It's a extreme day of visitation. So we're able to go back in time. We'll go revisit things. That's at the beginning of the ages. At the, by the end of the ages, we are revisiting things from God's infinite realm. Because the, those that are trying to kill us now, the Bill Gates and such, this is nothing compared to what they've done to us. Nothing compared to what they've done to us. We're going to find those things out. Every time the world's remade, our bodies are remade, everything grows bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Heaven, from our perspective, is almost infinite compared to what the earth is now. We're like a drop of water in an endless ocean compared to heaven. But by the time... Thousands of times creation is going to be remade with each age. The earth is going to become 
almost the same size as heaven, so the time differential isn't as great as it is now. So the time differential now is so extreme that the, the dragon's head's been cut off. Michael the Archangel was cut off the dragon's head way back in Genesis, and it still hasn't hit in the ground. It's so slow. So the you that is there, seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, you're frozen motionless from our perspective right here but those you know, those as the world the heaven and earth are remade new heaven and new earth new heaven and new earth new heaven and new earth the earth gets bigger and then our experience here as members of the lamb's body and the, and our our experiences in heaven the almost infinite and the members of christ's body they're going to become more equal as time goes on and, and at the end of every age i'm not kidding you you're gonna have a day of visitation in the lake of fire and we learn more and more about the perpetrators those that have been conspired to spitefully use us and to murder us and kill us. And, and imagine the time that John the Baptist is going to be with the backstabbing, the little head cut, chopping off Herod and all that. Okay, then. On earth, devil, as it is in heaven, dragon, as it is in God's infinite realm, Satan. So this is the truth the true nomenclature for the our enemy so satan is an infinite realm thing the dragon is the heaven thing the almost infinite realm the devil is the god of the world here so the dragon is an incarnation of satan the devil is an incarnation of the dragon add them all together because with the dragon you have the beast and the false prophet right Three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. You have three witnesses of spirit, blood, water here too. The devil, his beast, and his false prophet. Incarnations of these three. Add all these together, you have Satan in God's infinite realm, because he's infinite. So these, each of these hosts together, they are testifying to something, to someone in this case, that's infinite in God's infinite realm. So knowing the stories of each of these in detail helps you to hear that song and those songs all sing together into a symphony into a chorus symphony like an orchestra playing and then as you mature more and more your ear can pick out the song the notes of each from their testimony and then you begin to realize god's word is multi-dimensional it uh, it conveys mountainous amounts of information and simple nuances and gestures once you become familiar with god's word god's word's a living thing it's alive inside of us it's the testimony of the entire almost infinite heaven incarnate inside of us and inside of heaven in us is god his three witnesses testify he's in there right now inside of you inside of me only to be contained by his word. If his word stopped containing God in you for a split second, it would explode this entire universe. So much power in you and in me all at the same time. So yeah, I'm, the Lord God's letting me see this stuff and I'm trying to help you guys see it so you can help other people to see it. Like Amway. That's the way it works. So Satan's head's been severed. It's pressed against the veil. I went through that earlier. Time and judgment in this earth realm are catching up to match time that's already been. That's the Ecclesiastes 1. I make reference to Ecclesiastes 1 all the time, 9 to 11. God is dealing um, 54 minutes, 55 minutes. So I'm giving you, yeah, what has been is what will be. And what has been done is that is what will be done. So there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything which one might say this is new? It has already existed for ages. See, there were countless ages in Genesis 1-1. Just in Genesis 1-1, countless ages. We were all born singularities. We lived when nobody died. We all lived to the end of the age. Countless ages. Because God was replaying what it means to be infinite. Only after so many times, ages which were before us, then God reproduced Adam being murdered in God's infinite realm. So 
the earth, Adam became formless and void. So Genesis 1 is the retelling of the story of the reconstitution of those broken elements. There is no remembrance of the earlier things and of the latter things as well, which will occur. There will be no remembrance of them among those who will come later still. There will be more incarnations in the final three incarnations of heaven and earth than in all those previous from thousands of incarnations. The final three, the entire universe will be filled with light. This will happens way before those final three, but filled with light and all of the sons of God from all of those planets are going to come here. And they're going to serve Adam, who's David, on his throne. And they're going to go, nobody dies anymore. After so many incarnations, people are living souls. They are literal souls walking around. The earth environment is changed. There's no more sea already in the first. When everything is remade, there's no more sea. At some point, there's going to be no birds and no more fish. At some point, they're all going to be beasts of the field. All the blood witnesses take over everything. I know it sounds crazy. That's what the types say. Is going to happen okay so let me just start right here so did the sons of god now called the sons of satan in the infinite realm incarnate into adam the earth and impregnate the daughters and create nephilim or did angels on the side of satan after the fall created both angels and humans produce nephilim there are nephilim counterparts in adam in god's infinite realm and in heaven playing out with Mike with um, the dragon and Michael and in this universe for the third and final time there is nothing new happening under the Sun all of this is happening in heaven like it already happened in God's infinite realm therefore the answer to both of your questions is yes since the um, yeah they're both yes it's not either or thing since the name or term sons of God appear all-inclusive I'm still searching for names that can differentiate between the different sons of God that's why I had to come up with the word Rome because I'm not kidding you when you talk when you're talking about heaven back and forth and it's the highest heaven in the heaven of Genesis 1 8 heaven just it, 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 it can get mind twisting and when you're talking about different incarnations the word Christ Jesus in heaven and the lamb in heaven but it's the highest heaven the lowest heaven. then after a while you have you see the need to have the highest heaven be the word realm are there such names that will tell you which sons of God that you want to talk about okay so we are all sons of God in God's infinite realm we're all sons and in heaven fighting with Michael the Archangel and the earth as ambassadors for Christ sent by God as hosts of his light you are coming to realize that a proper understanding of God in heaven and earth requires more adjectives for the mature body members of Christ's body um, to deliberate the truth while staying on the same page. So this is the way it works. Satan is an infinite realm host, all inclusive of and including the dragon, the beast, the false prophet, and the devil, the beast, and his false prophet, the son, the son of perdition, the man of sin, whatever you want to call the guy that's here on the earth. He doesn't, if people are looking for the man of sin, they think Trump's a man of sin, Obama's a man of sin. Uh, no, stop it. That happens in 3,600 years at the end of the age. He actually comes to the literal temple and sets up his abomination of desolation. That's Daniel 9. That's also Matthew 24, 15 and 16. Okay, that's a literal person that's going to incarnate on the earth. The devil is going to incarnate as a man on the earth. That's going to happen. And his son is going to be his antichrist. They're going to be literal men on the earth 3,600 years from now. That doesn't happen today. So the Lord God, Christ, the Lamb of God, is coming at the end of the age on the clouds. We're coming with him. Colossians 1, Colossians 3, 1, go down to 4. When he returns, you're going to return with him in great glory. That's us. We're collecting the elect of Matthew 24. That's us. The bride comes with him too. Go to... Revelation 19, start at 5. By the time you get to 10, you'll see they come back with us too. 
Peter, John, and James. The body and the bride come through the, the, the sky, split open like a veil. We're going to come at the end of the age, 3,600 years from now. So the Antichrist incarnates inside of people like Christ, the new inner man I told you about. Paul writes about it three times in his letters. That is Christ in you, Colossians 1.27. The hope of glory, the expectation of glory. Christ in you, new inner man. Okay. Well, the there's a the mystery of iniquity places the the antichrist inside of the sons of disobedience. So they're already in the the antichrist is already in them as the temple. We're the temple of God, right? I mean, we read that the Holy Spirit's in our body, that we're a temple of the living God. We are our physical body. Well, the antichrist. And his, the members of his body are walking around us too. He's incarnate inside of them. People are waiting for the Antichrist to come, and the Antichrist is already in them. And they don't realize I'm just shaking my head here going, oh, my God, I wish I could help people to see what the truth is. They're waiting for a physical Antichrist to come. The mark of the beast. Karen, you sent me that mark of the beast, M-O, you know, mark of the beast. And is this the mark of the beast? The mark of the beast is the end of the age thing. What's happening now, the, the Chinese and the doing their hand thing, these are all types of that. So Paul says as looking in a mirror dimly. So what's happening now is the soul representation of what's going to physically happen later. You cannot see your soul, can you? But the soul overshadows the body. Though if you understand there's a physical fulfillment, you understand prophecy for that. Then you can understand there's a soul witness counterpart to that. That's what I see happening around us every day. So People that think prophecy is going to be fulfilled, stop it. That's not going to happen to the end of the age. There's a difference between prophecy being fulfilled and the mystery being revealed. What's happening today, there's not been a prophecy fulfilled for 2,000 years. I have my right hand up. Hold me to, to account for that. When we're standing for the Lord God, and he's going to tell you, uh, my son Terrell told you that there was no prophecy fulfilled for 2,000 years. That's because we're living in a mystery time. The kingdom is held in abeyance. This is a parenthetical period, a mystery time that the prophets could not see. If the prophets can't see it, they can't prophecy about it. God had to hide these things inside himself so the devil wouldn't see it because if the devil would have seen it, he would have never crucified Christ. Colossians 2 started 6, 6 through 8. Because if they would have known it, God's talking about God's hidden wisdom. If God, if they would have known it, what things I'm telling you right now, if the devil would have known it, he would have never crucified Christ. Because it's through his death, burial, and resurrection that we die with him and are resurrected with him to be seated in heavenly places. It's through that we judge the world and the angels. It's through that we crush Satan's head. See how it works? We're living in a mystery period. That's the truth. There's no prophecy going to be fulfilled. There are things that mirror prophecy that's being fulfilled. When you realize that's the soul part, that becomes a sign for you. So if you're mature, then you can read the signs. I can read the signs. And I can tell you what's prophecy and what's not. There's no prophecy being fulfilled. So Ezekiel, Zechariah is not going to be fulfilled. They point to things that Paul writes about that are being revealed today. And we are in this last times, but this is not the end of the age. No, we're near the day of the Lord's about to start. That's what the Thess books Paul wrote the Thessalonians, his earliest book, his letters, about the day of the Lord coming. And it hasn't come yet. If it hasn't come yet, the day of the Lord hasn't even started yet. There are a lot of things that have to be fulfilled. You see, did you see a temple in Jerusalem? No. Well, how's Matthew 24 going to be fulfilled? It can't be. Because the temple's got to be there for the Antichrist to come in and set up his abomination of desolation. Elijah has to come first to restore the temple before that can happen. Okay, so that's the truth. The truth is extremely rare. So for me, oh, what's he saying up here? We are all sons of God in God's infinite realm. Yeah, it requires more adjective. So this is the natural unsaved man. His heart is broken. It's a bottomless pit that's inside of us. So in Adam in Genesis 2, 7, uh, Bonnie, I think I was writing that to you today. The sign of the cross, you see the sign of the cross here? Or was it Karen? Um, 
we have seven power centers today in our body. Adam had nine. We're going to have nine in the future. Nine is the perfect number, not seven. Seven is, is a number of completion. It seems to be the number of completion now. Why? Because the universe is broken. There's not supposed to be men and women and angels. We're only put the woman back inside the man, put the man back inside the angel, and you have a living soul with nine chakras. See, the th three of those chakras were pulled out of the center part of man to make woman. Take those three and make three out of the top th the top one, three out of the bottom one, and the center one is broken. The hearts are broken. So the two become one flesh by joining at the heart. But you see, that's where the, heart, the cross crosses in the middle. Take the woman, put her back inside the man, you have the sign of the cross. That's what the sign of the cross is. It's the completion of man and woman being put back together again as a singularity expression. And that is the same symbol as all of the three witness mystery sets being put back together. And it's this sign of the cross right here that you see. So whenever you're ephod in heaven, you're going to have an ephod. And when you start off, you can look down at it, you're going to see it. If you're not very mature, it's going to be just a scrambled mess. Different colors, especially if it has earth tones. By the time you're finished, it's only going to have two colors, gold and red. And the gold is going to be the outline, and the inner part is going to be red, and it's going to be the sign of a cross. By the time you're done, that's explained in my book, The Mystery Explained. It's going to look a whole bunch like this. Gold and red. That's all you're going to want in your ephod. All the other colors, you don't want blues, browns, greens, earth tone colors. You don't want those. Red and gold. For me, there are sons of light serving God and his word, sons of darkness serving Satan, the devil, and this realm, and the end, end is Antichrist. Our focus regarding the enemy in heaven, the word realm, is the dragon and his beast and their false prophet, who together testify for Satan in God's infinite realm, like the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit testify for God's word. As you can see, there's a whole lot of incarnating going on all around us and inside of us that will keep the mature members of Christ's body busy, setting things straight for the immature babes wondering what is really going on. So th this exercise that I'm giving you now about who's who and what's what and what spirit, blood and water and all that, we're going to be doing that for the sons of God for ages and ages and ages and ages. The, when the age begins, now this first one, the, the sons of God are going to be confused. When we start off right now, they're not going to realize the importance of a tutor that Paul writes about. You may have a thousand tutors, but that he's our father in Christ. Which sounds, well, anyway. But by the time we get to the new heaven and new earth of Revelation 21.1, the sons of God are going to realize that this is a competition that you have to run to win. Because you want to be higher up in that pyramid. And they're going to pull stones. The sons of God are going to pull stones out of their ephod and hand it to their brothers that they think can get them ahead. They're going to hire them as tutors and give them their rewards from the previous age. So they will teach them and instruct them throughout the whole age so they can go and instruct others and earn great rewards. Because they're going to be given from their brother who can instruct them. And everybody's going to realize that Getting the right tutor is the most important thing. Kind of like going to college. And getting the right tutors gets you far, far ahead. Thinking farther, far enough ahead. And that's what this program is all about. It's like taking you to, to heavenly college while we're still in this dark, evil age. It gets you so far ahead. And I'm, I'm doing interviews and I'm waving my arms around going, hey, hey, this is really important. And people just don't seem to be getting it. Because the members of Christ's body back in Paul's day would have got it. Because they're the ones that are higher up in the pyramid. The more straight cut, and more, the stronger, mature members of Christ's body. And so you take that pyramid, lay it on its side, and put Christ and Paul and Barnabas and Titus 2,000 years ago. And then the pyramid gets bigger to today and the world is filled with rough cut. The members of Christ's body that are saved. Or the rough cut variety, but I'm telling you, you have an opportunity to get these things straight. Cutting straight the word, right? You're dividing the word is in the Greek is really cut straight the word. You you have the ability to cut these things straight and to ascend up that pyramid and surprise a whole lot of sons of God 
by getting these things right here. So I don't have time, but this is kind of like a follow-up for this. And I did put one diagram here. This is 666. He who has wisdom, he will understand. 666 is the number of a man, Revelation 13, 18. This is the 666. Man, right here, I'm showing it to you. The body of the devil, the body of the Antichrist, and the body of the false prophet. That's being, that's passing away. The rulers of this age that are passing away, the heart of stone. This is what's replacing it, the body of Elijah, Christ, and Moses. And it's coming in. And we are part of that. And where's your place going to be? In the pyramid, that is Christ. And he's the top capstone of that pyramid. Ephesians 2, was it 20? That is going to affect where you are in the mountain of God and God's infinite realm. You want to be up near the top of that mountain. You don't want to be down on the down near the bottom. Well, unless that's, you know, depends how ambitious you are. I, I want to see you guys go higher and higher and higher because I'm not kidding you. This is like Amway. And the higher you go, the higher I go. Because I'd be your tutor, right? You're giving me things, rewards, and then you're finding people to help you in your environment and they're giving you rewards and we're all ascending up the mountain of God like a rocket ship. So that's what, that's what I'm really looking forward to. This is really what, uh, see, there's there's a lot more that's down here. It's in the, it's in the newsletter number three for 2024. So you guys can check it out. And uh, let's see, do I have anything else that I want to share with you? I think that's it. I showed you the mystery explained. This is where you can get a copy of it. If, if you subscribe, you get it for free. You get access to all the newsletters. That's what I recommend that you do. Go back to newsletter number one, the two gospels of the New Testament, and begin your adventure. Follow the breadcrumb trail. Because if you begin that now, you will never catch me. There's too much. You, you read the mystery explained. You're reading the New Testament. You're reading my mystery reports. You're making your red folder. You'll never catch me before the Black Star gets here. So that's why one of the reasons, I mean, I'm doing 10,000 things, but you're not seeing a whole lot of work on this. I'm a little bit disappointed because more people aren't coming along. But I'm not kidding you. There's the information in that Dropbox folder for $25. And you get a copy of my book. And you get discounts on your Nano Silver. And if you get the, if you, Subscribe to the tutor program. It's just 25 extra dollars a year. You can send me your questions like Gary. And I'll be your tutor. Really, really cool stuff. So that's it. And if you go to any of my, some people, if you're using your phone, you have difficulty. So I'm a PC guy. I'm not a phone guy. I never even looked at a website on my phone until somebody showed me how here recently. I'm a PC guy. So this website is set up for PCs. Phone users, there's... There's a button here you can push to help you with that. But if you just go to any of my recent posts over at Substack, tarot.substack.com, go down to the bottom, and you just click on this link right here. Boom. $25 a year. Tutor program. Boom. Right there. You get your notification email always within 24 hours. So if you don't get your notification email within 24 hours, go look in your spam folder. So I got one of those emails today. You subscribed in May. You go, oh, I don't, I didn't get my, yes, you did. I sent you a copy of it, but it doesn't come from tarot at tarot03.com. You see, it comes from the supporter email address. So go and check. If you subscribe, if you see this overnight and you subscribe, your email was sent, your notification email was sent May 30th, May 31st, I think it was, at 620 a.m. Most of them are sent between 6 and 8 a.m. in the morning. If you subscribe overnight, if I, if your notification comes in, I'm sitting at my desk here, I'll send it immediately. Otherwise they usually come in overnight and that's it. And, um, I should remind you, protect your EMP shield, protect yourself, protect your family. Also, there's updated information in that newsletter. Some of the older, question and answers about Nanosilver and things like that in there. And Substack, you can sign up right there. It's free. If you have the resources, I hope that you'll 
support me. It starts at $8 a month. If you have resources, plenty of resources. And uh, I hope you will. And that's it. That's all I can think of to share with you. Appreciate your support very, very much. Get more information. Oh, before I go, um, YouTube has targeting my Christian channel, the one that I almost never use. They might shut me down. Just saying. I've gotten two. They've deleted two of my posts from four years ago. They go back four years and they go, oh, look. Uh. And they haven't given me a strike yet. But what they've done is, see, I made some comments. I logged on and I made some comments on posts. So now they're giving me the, oh, well, we're going to start deleting your post if you make comments. Because the truth, it just, the Google is of the devil and YouTube is of the devil. And they have no narrative. You know, hey, come on, Kamala Harris is their guy. <laughs> You know, that's what losers they are. So they have no debate. They have no narrative. They have nothing. So all they can do is threaten us and try to make us be afraid. That's all they have. Because they're wrong about everything. They're trying to kill us and destroy us. And we're going to visit them in the lake of fire. Looking very much forward to that. These Google monsters that uh, have so much power that they take down my channels and things. They took down my Black Star channel, you know. They had to go back months and months and months to find something wrong. Like that's what they're doing to me now. They're they're targeting me for attack. So if that happens, I don't know. I haven't backed all that up on Rumble and the other channel. So access the information while you still can. That's why I can say I haven't got my first strike yet. So and if I don't make any more comments, they may 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 not continue their campaign against me. So that's it. Thank you very very much. Appreciate your support. Get more information right here at terror 3com down in the spiritual section. And I'll see you on the next mystery report.